this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Dr. Kelly, I'll start with you. Uh, we're talking about possibly repealing Section 43 of the Criminal Code, which is a codification of the common law defense available for teachers and parents uh, to charges of assault against children. Uh, and the Supreme Court of Canada weighed in on this issue uh, 20 years ago, uh, and the Chief Justice at that time said this about Section 43, which they defended as, as being constitutional. She said, the reality is that without Section 43, Canada's broad assault law would criminalize force falling far short of what we think of as corporal punishment, like placing an unwilling child in a chair for a five-minute timeout. So, um, D Dr. Kelly, we heard from uh, uh, earlier witnesses, including the sponsor of this bill, uh, about uh, horrific stories about children being hit in the face, being hit with sticks, uh, physical abuse. Uh, so I would like to your comment. Does Section 43 protect that kind of behavior? Uh, thanks for this question. No, it does not. So as you've alluded to, in 2004, the Supreme Court of Canada read in a series of limitations as to what would constitute reasonable correction. When it upheld Section 43, it made clear in that decision that in the case of teachers, corporal punishment of any kind is not included in Section 43, only forms of restraint uh, in cases, for instance, for protecting themselves or other students. Uh, and in the case of uh, uh, parents, uh, use of instruments, blows or strikes to the head, contact, uh, physical discipline of children under two or teenagers were all read out of the ambit of Section 43. So uh, the only maybe slight caveat I would have to the question is that uh, with respect to, for instance, uh, grabbing a child if they were about to run out onto the street, uh, it's not my view that that would be criminalized uh, if Section 43 were repealed. Uh, there would still be necessity defenses in the case of an immediate action to, to protect a child. Um, but uh, the example that I gave of uh, a strike, for instance, to the leg of a child resisting in a car seat would be within the ambit of 265 and would not be captured. But the more horrendous examples that you gave uh, have indeed been read out. And I have reviewed uh, the case law since Canadian Foundation was decided. And we simply do not see courts today upholding the kinds of egregious uh, abuse that they uh, did prior to 2004. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, if Section 43 were to be repealed, in other words, if uh, this private member's bill does pass through Parliament, in your opinion, would the common law defence kick in again? Uh, and what would be the message to, uh, to the public of repealing Section 43? So the defenses that would continue to exist and that continue to exist right now alongside Section 43 are those that exist generally for any types of physical contact with anyone, uh, not specific to children. That would include self-defense, force that's used in defense of oneself or a third party in a case of imminent danger. Uh, the defense of necessity I referred to when you take an action in an urgent moment, for instance, to prevent someone from running onto a street, those would remain. Um, but outside of that, uh, non-consensual touching beyond a de minimis level, beyond a minimal threshold, would be uh, considered assault. And the message uh, that would be sent, uh, I think proponents of repeal hope that the message will be that all forms of physical discipline are, are wrong and unlawful, but I think we also have to be attuned to the message that will be sent to police, child welfare workers, and prosecutors, which will be that those forms of uh, my example of striking the, the child's leg in, in the car seat, for instance, uh, that all those forms of contact will be assault, and that in for particular families, especially those most marginalized, 
uh, we may indeed see, I, I would expect to see, uh, uh, further cases of that kind that actually go through the system. Sorry, one quick uh, question. We had uh, witnesses uh, here um, at, uh, at our last meeting uh, uh, pointing out that the Supreme, uh, sorry, that Parliament never responded to the 2004 decision from the Supreme Court of Canada that it, perhaps it is time uh, to expand the, or to further define this Section 43 defense uh, by basically codifying what the Supreme Court of Canada said. For example, uh, clarifying that clarifying that force must be sober and reasoned. Force cannot be applied to a child under two or over 13, et cetera, right? The, the um, items that were listed in the Supreme Court of Canada. What do you say about that? Would that be a good idea to have a, for example, a section 43.1 that explains that? So, may, um, I you're, think we're going to have to wait for the response to another question, just simply to let other members have their turn. Um, and you know, you look at uh, Section 43, we can look at it in the historical context, but we also, uh, as we sit here today, have to look at it in the reality of what the law does and what the law does not do um, here in 2024. Um, and we are um, dealing at Section 43 now, not as it is written in the code, but also as it has been significantly interpreted and narrowed in a leading Supreme Court of Canada uh, case, a case that, uh, ha had it not existed, a Parliament itself may have, um, may have taken similar action. So I know when uh, the bill was introduced, um, Dr. Kelly, I'll address this to you, when the bill was introduced, uh, the proponent mentioned in their opening remarks some actions that um, clearly, uh, in my view, is that they fall outside of the scope of Section 43. And, um, but I want to get your opinion on it. For, for example, uh, punching or uh, slapping a child in the face, uh, do you think that, that, is, um, that there's a defense in Section 43 for that as interpreted by the Supreme Court? No, I do not. And. Uh, paddling a child or striking a child um, with uh, an object? No, I do not. Okay. And uh, leaving a, a bruise, slapping someone and leaving a bruise on their cheek? Uh, no. Section 43, no. So and we also know that the court narrowed um, the application of Section 43 uh, for corrective to to those that are two and over and and not yet teenagers, um, what about teachers uh, administering corporal punishment? Does Section forty three, as interpreted by the Supreme Court uh, in this leading decision, Section forty three, then as it appears before us in Canadian law, can teachers administer corporal punishment and be protected by Section forty three? No, they cannot. Okay, and uh, I, I'm thank you for your quick answers because I think that's the reality that we're dealing with here today. Um, there was a reality before, but then there's the reality in the law, and that's what with this private members bill we are we are vested with today. And um, I, I think I've seen some of the dangers that have been highlighted with just simply um, ab abolishing Section 43. Um, Mr. Lutz, you mentioned, um, and we heard previous testimony on this, the chilling effect it could have on teachers um, when it comes to breaking up a fight. And I, as a parent, I find that remark kind of uh, horrifying when you think if, if someone is being beaten by a school a classmate uh, or by a couple classmates, and you only have to uh, look on your social media, this is happening all over. It's being posted. I know you're from Nova Scotia. I'm from New Brunswick. We're seeing this across the country and internationally, video of, of uh, fights at school. It's not an easy environment that teachers are in. Can you speak to a bit this chilling effect that you as a leader would be, um, would be the message you would be sending to your teachers if this protection is not there? 
Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for the question. And first off, I want to want to say, um, you know, the NSTU opposes violence against children, period, full stop, uh, and corporal punishment as well. That, that is not what we're what we're speaking to. Uh, I also agree with my with the Monsieur Lavassal that I think it's really important to repeal Section 43. It's just important to get it right. So I, I appreciate the colonial legacy that, that Section 43 uh, has brought to us. We have to do away with that. Section 43 should be repealed, but it should be done so at the, while at the same time protecting teachers in schools. Um, and, and the unfortunate reality is that our schools are more violent than they were. And that's not, that's not a reality that I want. Um, I have two kids. Uh, that's not the reality I want for them. Um, I also want their teachers able to protect them and keep them safe. And I want them to be able to do that without doing a mental calculus of do they think that their, the criminal law is going to protect them or not. Um, so I think we can do both. I think we can repeal Section 43 and honor the Truth and Reconciliation Commission while also amending the criminal code to, to, to make you know, um, teachers able to keep their kids safe at school. Um, that's what we want. Um, and at the end of the day, I, I, it's, again, parliamentary procedure is not my expertise. I'm a, I'm a math teacher. Um, that's where we look to you. Um, but if, if we can't get this right, I, I, think, I think that's where we have to put our efforts. We have to put our efforts into doing both things at once. Um, and I believe this committee and the, the esteemed folks around this table can do that, can repeal Section 43 while also ensuring that um, teachers and schools have the tools they need to keep our kids safe. I want to agree with what Mr. Moore just said. This panel has been uh, very informative, as all the panels have been on this issue, frankly. Um, and I'm glad, I think Mr. Moore used the term a dose of reality or being realistic, because this is, this is the part I'm struggling with. I mean, we can all give examples around this table of extreme cases where a change would not work or would work or if it, the status quo doesn't work. Um, so we, we need to sort of parse that out and get to the core of the issue. So, um, Mr. Lutz, for you, sir, to start with, the Nova Scotia Teachers falls under the jurisdiction of the Canadian Teachers Federation, I'm assuming? Uh, we, we, yeah, we are a member of the Canadian Teachers Federation. Okay, because Ms. Yetman said in her testimony earlier today, and I think you were here, that if Section 43 is repealed, that it would be their advice to teachers not to touch or lay a hand on any students. Do you agree with that uh, approach, if, if that's what happens? So th that is what our, our legal experts are saying, is that that would have to be not, that's not a world I want to live in, okay. but that would have to be our advice for teachers uh, moving forward. Okay, so I want to pick up on something more just to say. Let's assume this is a grade seven class. You're the teacher, and Mr. Caputo and Mr. Moore start to beat me up. If Section 43 is repealed, are you going to tell your teachers that they have to stand by and watch that happen and not uh, inject themselves and to try to break up the fight? I mean, again, I certainly hope not. What, what are legal... Well, no, no, what it's are, not hope. This is, this is a very realistic question. Yeah, what, because what the are, evidence is that they will tell their teachers not to touch their students. I'm giving you a real scenario. It happens in classrooms all the time. Absolutely. So what would, you, what would you do as a math teacher in a grade 7 class if those two guys start beating me up? So I, let's just be clear. What our legal experts are saying is that our advice would have to be... Um, not, not to lay your hands on kids. Period. What I would do and, is and a math. No, if I can finish my question, do you mind if I finish the question? Because I think that's Mr. it's Mr. really Maloney. important. Yeah. What yeah. I would do as a teacher in that ex in that class is I would intervene. I would find someone to intervene. But I, I don't want. I don't want our teachers to have to go through some nuanced legal analysis. I want, why, I, I want them to be able to take really reasonable reactions in the moment to keep, keep, keep kids safe. And that's where our legal experts have said, without Section 43, we, we would be putting teachers at risk. And I don't want to live in that world. I want to live in the world where the teachers can intervene reasonably to keep kids safe and know they're protected. And that's what I, again, I, I really want to be clear because our position is very nuanced. It is Section 43 should be repealed while at the exact same time additional protection should be given so that teachers and schools have the tools in their toolbox to keep kids safe. You can't, you shouldn't, we shouldn't be doing one without the other. Section 43 should be repealed, and at the same time, and it's really important that it happens at the same time, we must include the school safety amendment um, to ensure that teachers are, are, are not um, prosecuted for, again, very reasonable um, interventions to keep kids safe. I don't disagree with you, uh, Mr. Lutz. Unfortunately, I think perhaps the position might be 
over nuanced and over legally analyzed, to be honest, because I don't think there's a scenario where uh, the example I just gave where a court's going to hold you responsible for breaking up a fight and protecting one student from two other students or one other student. And I don't think the repeal of Section 43 would create that exposure. Um, but so I, I, I'm. I think you would still be allowed to do your job in the same way we are now. Section 43, as we've heard time and time again, was introduced at a time uh, and place that is entirely different now. And it's, com and it's entirely different than it was uh, prior to the Supreme Court of Canada decision as well. So I want to move over to you, Dr. Kelly. Um, let's assume that, doc that uh, Section 43 is repealed, and let's assume that a uh, a student or a teacher rather is uh, charged with an offense uh, as they could be now because I don't think students or teachers or parents know that section 43 exists until they get it hire a lawyer in a, in a particular situation. Uh, do you not think that the Supreme Court of Canada as they've laid out in their decision though that would still provide guidance to courts in, in analyzing a particular seconds, set of facts uh, uh, when a teacher's put in a position where he has to defend himself against an assault charge? Yes, absolutely. If, if a teacher, if anyone is charged with an assault and there is uh, a, a need to apply or to interpret Section 43, a court does so in accordance with... No, no, I, I'm saying court. in the absence of Section 43, that would still provide guidelines to judges who are, who are reviewing the facts of a case against a teacher. Well, in the absence of Section 43, then you would be interpreting the contact as you would under general Section 265 assault jurisprudence. Are you saying that that, that I mean, Supreme I, Court case so, would have no bearing whatsoever? Is that your position? So, that's correct. <laughs>